has come from nowhere to be a real chance for top honours in the p and Invitational Tournament. He has his sights set firmly on the first prize worth $5,000 and today needs to overcome his own emotions and Canberra's Kevin Richardson to enter the semi-final against Melbourne's Ron Powell. Richardson has twice represented Australia in Asia. He has a 1984 tournament average of 198 and qualified third for this televised event at Canberra's new Woden Bowl. Can Coleman keep up his winning streak or will Richardson burst his bubble? Join us for the action after this break. And here we are for the next match in our men's p and Invitational and Alan Coleman, the boulder from Tasmania. He's won three games on the trot. He's beaten John Caballo of Perth, Rod Bayless of South Australia and Kevin Quinn of New South Wales and now he's in against Kevin Richardson of the ACT. Should be a good match. And there's Alan's first delivery. And as uh, usual, he's opening up with a strike. That was a good start, Bob Cook. Nice high ball. Could have got him into trouble, but he's got lots of work on that ball, and the pins went down. They sure did, and uh, they're going down at the rate of 214 per game. That's his average for the three matches so far. He had 208, 223, and 211, and uh, he's been in trouble a few times, but he's always managed to pull out a few strikes. He's bowled very, very well so far, and now we're in against Kevin Richardson. Yes, Alan's bowled 16 strikes in the three games already, Steve. Going at a very good rate. Well, Kevin, uh, false start there, but have a look at the style on this young man. Great follow-through from Kevin. Yes, and it's a big ball too, and look at that one. Beauty. That's really big, and he's uh, psyched up for this game. Local hope here in Canberra, the top-seeded bowler from Canberra this year. He was the highest qualifier in the Interstate Rockway teams roll-off, and he's got an... Uh, Average of 198 in uh, tournaments, 197 in leagues. And he averaged 195 at the Woden Bowl to make his third seated position here. Alan looking for another strike, looks great. Oh, what a great start this is. Alan Coleman still on fire. A double to open up. He's really looking to put Tasmania right up on top in the p &O series. He certainly is. Kevin wiping the oil off the ball so he doesn't lose it in his palm of his hand. And that's quite a, an old ball, isn't it? He's uh, thrown a few games with that one. <laughs> yes. No older than Alan's. Alan's is a, a replica of the early 60s. <laughs> I was going to say it's a relic. <laughs> Let's see if uh, he can match Alan's opening double, and he has. It was a lucky one. We'll have a look at that one. Uh, the ball's crossed over to the left-hand side of the head pin. And there goes the nine pin, the last one to fall. Now, Alan's uh, got a tough opponent here, obviously. One who's just as keen to win this match and continue working their way up the ladder. The loser of this game gets $500. Crowd's very tense. Alan looking for three strikes in a row. Ooh, that, that was a bad ball. one. Only five pins. Very tough spare. Yes, possibly the result of a slightly rushed approach. Quite often, if your feet get to the foul line before the ball does, you tend to drop it, and uh, we heard a little bit of a clunk there when Alan let the ball go, but we're back with Kevin Richardson now, who can take a lead with another strike. A wide fingertip grip. Only the tips of Kevin's fingers in the ball. He reefed that one out on the lane, and that uh, ten pin's rocking, but it's not going to go, so that's... An eight count for him and a three pin lead in the first frame, 28 to Alan Coleman, 25. Coleman, a difficult cluster of pins, this one. And he's got it. Now, oh, perfect placement. Boy, did he need that one. That's a tough spare. Alan, in the three games he's bowled on TV, has only missed one spare. And I think Kevin Richardson's changed balls. He's got a harder variety out for this corner pin spare. And this one will slide a little bit more. Oops, he lost his footing, but the ball was on target. Yes, the bowlers often go to the harder ball, so it doesn't hook as far and, and knock one pin off from the other. Yes, that's an interesting uh, thing for him to do, and uh, a bowler of experience should try that, but certainly not a once-a-week person. And once a week, people can't afford more than one ball, generally, Steve. Mm. Well, Alan Coleman, the 
winner of three matches so far. And uh, he's opened up nicely here. He's had three strikes out of four shots, 65 in the third frame. Kevin Richardson needs a strike to stay three pins ahead. Kevin is an assistant manager at the Canberra Lakes Caratel Motel. And uh, he's been there five or six years. He's looking for a good showing in front of his home crowd. Well, he was an Australian representative in 1976 in Jakarta and 1978 in Bangkok, so he's had some overseas experience too. You saw that uh, very extended grip there on his ball, but he's struck all the same, three oh, pins ahead. A nice carry on that four pin, he's very happy. The ball yes. hit high, the four pin often stands from such a high hit in the pocket, but he had work on it, and down it went. Well, these pins are three pounds, four ounces each, and they're brand new. They're just straight out of the box for this TV series. And each of them are 15 inches tall, despite what they look like on, the, on your screen. They're not easy to knock down, are they, Steve? No, they're getting harder as I get older. <laughs> Alan's certainly making it look easy. Yes, he is. He's doing it very nicely. He broke them up again. Well, that's the result of a very good working ball. Yes, we saw Kevin Quinn hit that position on the head pin and left four pins standing. Uh, Alan only has the one there, getting a lot of work off his ball. The winner of this game goes in against a previous p TV winner, Ron Powell, in our next men's match, but next week we've got a ladies semi-final for you. He can take a lead with another strike and he's got it. Not happy with it. It went over to the left-hand side of the head pin, known in the bowling game as a Brooklyn strike as opposed to the New York pocket strike, but uh, it's given him the lead. Kevin's a purist. He likes to get his strikes the proper way in the one free pocket, but I'm sure he'll take that one. Yes, I can't see anyone knocking it back in a, a do or die match such as this one. And uh, Alan Coleman in uh, probably the most trouble he's been in since this series started. He'll be around about 13 pins behind after four frames. But as we've seen so often, he's been able to pull some strikes out when they've been desperately required. Kevin now off to a great start. Four strikes in his first five balls. Looking to make it five out of six. An interesting push away too. That was a nice angle shot of him and uh, oh, he's not happy again. He's crossed over. He's indicating his follow through isn't going for a straight and that's the result. The ball won't stay on line and it'll cross that head pin. Yes, he's pulling it over to the left just a little as he lets the ball go, whereas uh, when Alan's been bowling a good shot, that follow through is coming straight up through the air. There it goes now, and there's a strike, I bet. Yes, what a judge. <laughs> 105 now in the fifth frame for Alan Coleman, and letting out a, a grunt of approval there. And a very vocal man from Tasmania. Yes, he certainly is. He likes to let it all out. He doesn't want to keep things bottled up inside him. And uh, when he beat Kevin Quinn uh, a couple of matches ago, he was very, very vocal. And a spare. 12 pins the difference. We've got a very good match on our hands here. 105 for Coleman and 117 now for Kevin Richardson. But Coleman's got a strike working and he can regain the lead now with another strike. Taking his time. Yes, there's a bit of psych in this game too. No need to hurry. Oh, that's a nice push away. Oh, he broke it up again. Getting away with murder. He's got a well-working ball. Any, any lesser ball would have left a big split. Yes, he's certainly getting plenty of lift on it, and that's the, uh, the benefit of that sort of a release. Even if you put it in the wrong place, you can still get eight or nine out of it instead of leaving the sixes and seven splits. Kevin's taking a deep breath. He's got a low push away. He got that one out on the lane, but it's crossing over again and... Uh, Not getting the big follow through. He's cutting his follow through short. And the ball's diving to the left. Not going through the shot. Well, neither of these bowlers have been on TV much. Uh, Alan, of course, has been on a few times now of late, but uh, Kevin Richardson, this could be his first time on television. And it's... Uh, not easy out there. There's a lot of lights and it's very, very humid. It's really a sweat box situation out on the approach. You're out there on your own. And uh, Kevin has a, his most difficult pin to go for, I guess, and he's changed balls again to that heavier variety. Let's see if he keeps his footing this time. 
Good shot. And he has, and he's uh, got it right in the middle of it. 11 pins ahead now, 136 for Richardson on your screen and 125 for the Bolter from Tasmania. Alan Coleman won three matches on the trot. Be looking to win this one and then go into the semi-final. It'd be a great effort if he could work his way right up that step ladder. He's got to win this game first and he's behind at the moment. It's got to be a strike here. Oh, and he spun those pins around the deck and that's uh, one of the rare 10 pins we've seen him leave from a pocket hit. No trouble carrying that five pin, but this time the 10 pin remained. Yes, that ball's uh, just amazing. It's so old, yet it still blows the pins to pieces. There's life in the old ball yet. <laughs> Back with Kevin, he starts way left on the approach. Ball's a good turning ball. Yes, he gave that one plenty of air. And a beautiful strike right in the pocket. Let's see this one. And he rode it too. He got down on one knee to pull that one in. And there it goes. He's still in front. 12 pins with a strike working. And Coleman going for that difficult corner pin. He missed that one. That's the only error he's had, incidentally, in all of his matches on television. He missed the 10 pin in against Kevin Quinn, but came back with strikes to, uh, to win that game. And he's left a split once. Apart from that, Alan Coleman's been clean throughout, spares and strikes. Kevin Richardson now could well become a local Woden bowler. He lives not too far away. And if he can bowl well here, I'm sure he'll make this centre his home. One of the newest bowls in Australia. The interesting win when the P&O series was first started in 1982, there were only 94 centres. Oh, yes, a beautiful strike for Kevin Richardson. He's taken a very handy lead now. And as Bob was saying, uh, two years ago there were 94 bowling centres in Australia and now there are more than 120 and still some others being built. So uh, the sport's taken on a new lease of life in this country and uh, these two bowlers are a couple of very good products, state champions in their own right. Coleman now in trouble. Well, he's got out of it before. Gonna have to have a strike shortly. No, he's not doing it as easily as he uh, has been uh, with his 2.14 average in those other three matches, but uh, still a little bit of room to move. Kevin non-plussed about the situation. He doesn't want to see what Alan's doing. He knows that if he can strike out, he's going to shut the gate. And yes, Alan faulted under pressure probably the first time, Steve, in the series. Well, this is a baby split, a make-it-fit split, and he hasn't. And I think that's uh, the end of Alan Coleman from Devonport. I can't see him winning this game now. He's only got room for 201 and uh, Kevin Richardson shooting at a 246 if he goes all the way and uh, 220 if it's just a spare. Taking his time, he wants to finish big. He's had two good strikes the last two shots. He moved left on the approach because of the lane conditions being a little drier than usual under these hot TV lights. Yes, it's a good performance. Kevin normally bowls the ball from the right-hand side of the lane. He's moved way left, so he's improving his versatility. And let's see what this one does. Ooh, a little bit light. And that's uh, a problem, of course, when you move way left. The ball doesn't quite finish as much as it does from a different uh, angle. And those 10 pins can be left, but uh, it's certainly enough for him to win this game. He's going to shoot probably in the 220s. Coleman has to strike out for a 201. And just lost the touch. Yes, he lost it. Uh, he got a strike there in the sixth frame, and uh, if he could have added one in the seventh, that would have kept him going. But uh, unfortunately, that will be the last we see of Alan Coleman in this tournament. A $500 prize, all the same for fourth place. And Kevin Richardson moves up that ladder, the uh, tough ladder, in against the previous champion, Ron Powell of Victoria, in our semi-final. I mean, an excellent game from Richardson. Each time he put together one strike, he added another. He's had three doubles. Yes, that's a solid game. 220 out of three doubles. Excellent performance. And an excellent performance by uh, Alan Coleman. He's four games on TV, resulting in one error and two splits, and everything else has been a strike or a spear. Kevin just checking the scores to see if he can beat... Uh, 
Allen's 2.23. He needs a, a nine or a strike to do that, and that'll be the highest game in the series so far. Let's see what this one is. There's a nine, 2.24, a new high game in the p series, and a winner to go in against Ron Powell. But in the next match, we'll see the women's semi-final. Jill Coombs, who surprisingly beat Ruth Gerster, will be in against the Canberra girl, Jenny Burton. And there's a good finish by Alan Coleman, a strike and a 191, and certainly no disgrace for the bowler from Devonport. But congratulations to Kevin Richardson, the Canberra winner in our PO tournament today.